Hi, this is Greg Hughes from 90 Second Website Builder. I'd like to talk to you about a tool in the software called the Layout Grid. Now, the Layout Grid is unique to many of the other tools in 90 Second Website Builder in that it accomplishes a lot in one little tool. It's pretty robust. It has a lot of options, and you can get kind of lost just studying this one tool. There's some things in the 90 second website builder software that are pretty straightforward, like an image or text object. You drag them onto the canvas, as you already know, and you work with them. But with the layout grid, this tool that I'm pointing to right now in the toolbox, it has a lot of possibilities, which makes it very powerful. So we're going to talk about the aspects of the layout grid. So let's grab one. I'm going to grab this tool and draw a box. And you'll notice, if you haven't already worked with the layout grid, you'll notice that it snapped right up to the top of the page. A layout grid is unlike those objects that you can just put anywhere you want on the canvas. And there's a reason for that. And there's a really good reason for that. You want it to do that. And we'll talk about that as we go. But this is a basic grid. Now this grid that we put on here by default is two columns. There's a column here and a column here. While we call it a grid, don't be confused by that. This is not the kind of grid that's like a table or a spreadsheet. A layout grid is always one single row with as many as 12 columns. This one has two. But let's double click on it and take a look at its settings. Here are two columns. And these columns can be equal in size or we can adjust them in size like this. But they'll always add up to a total of 12. This is a three column, this is a nine column. Those aren't pixels, those are just some unit of measurement that, that always adds up to 12. And if we add a column, it's always gonna add up to 12. And this is how we would decide on the width of those columns, just by dragging this little handlebar over here. You can have, like I said, as many as 12. So we can keep adding them if we want to and spreading them out. And we're doing this so that we can put, obviously put content into these cells. But again, it's one row with anywhere from one to 12 columns. Now, in a minute, I'm gonna show you more practical use of this because we'll work with the website that's built with layout grids. But I wanna give you the basics first. So let's talk about managing these columns. Again, you can add and remove them here. You can also edit each column. Now, a column has its own, a column or a cell has its own background if you want. If we click on edit, that's the one attribute that that cell can have. It can be transparent, which it is by default, or you can add some backgrounds to it. I'm not gonna get into the weeds on that because there's so many nuances and variables we can play with. I just want you to know where things are. So in a minute, I'm gonna to talk to you about some of these settings. But again, let's do it with an actual website that uses a layout grid. So this will make more sense. I'm gonna cancel out of here, and I'm going to bring up a website, I'm gonna bring it into focus here, that's actually built with layout grids. Now watch what happens. This is a website that's got a number of grids. This is a grid up here. This is a grid with content in it. Here's another grid right here that's got this heading. This is a three column grid. Watch what happens when I reduce the width of this page with my browser. You'll notice that it is responsive, but it's responsive in a way that does not require us to make multiple page variations. If you've done any responsive design in this software, you'll know that you can have a default size and then smaller versions of the page, and you would design each one of these pages. We're not having to do that with this tool because the layout grid actually causes the objects to respond no matter how wide the browser window gets. As you can see, they are automatically responding somewhat. So that's great because that makes more sense in making a responsive site. However, there are some limitations to using this and we'll uncover those as we go. Let me scroll down here. Let's look at some other content. This is actually a photo gallery inside one grid. And you can see as we reduce the size of the browser, it responds appropriately. It even restacked the images in a certain way right there so that they fit in the screen better. And this is what a layout grid allows us to do. So we're going to work with this particular template and see how it was designed with layout grids. One other thing I'll say is you'll notice whenever we add a layout grid to the canvas, I'm going to add another one here you'll notice it snaps into place right under the previous one. So here we have layout grid one, as you can see in our object manager, that's this one. And then we have layout grid two. 
you don't drag these around and put them in a fixed position. They will snap into place. Even if I wanted to move this one to a lower position, it's not going to do that. It's going to snap right back to where it was. I can move these around if I want to change their sequence. I can do that down here in the object manager. If I grab this, go down here, now grid number one is this one, and this is grid number two. But that's about the only way you have to sort of move the grids around. So you kind of want to plan your work, but again, you can restack them by doing this. Okay, so enough of the theory. Let's get to some practical things that we can do with the layout grids. So we'll do that by studying the website we just looked at that was online. This is what it looks like on the canvas. So let's kind of take this apart. This first top layout grid right here is a layout grid with two columns or two cells, as you can see. In each cell, we have some objects. In this cell, there's an object that's simply a text object. If I take it out, you can see it's a text object. Since it's got white font, you can't see it very well uh, over here. But if we put it back inside where there's sort of that orange background, you can see that it's a text object. I want you to notice too that as I drag this object into a cell, you'll see that it lights up kind of like a layer does. You see that blue box? It's telling me that I've made it into the cell of the grid when that blue highlight appears. And you'll also notice that it snaps into place. Again, it's not a fixed position. It snaps into place depending on how I have this formatted. This object in this cell is called a CSS menu, which you may have worked with before. This is what a CSS menu looks like out here. But if we put it inside a grid, let me move the camera over. So here I put the CSS menu out here on the canvas. Outside of a layout grid, it can go wherever it wants to. But inside the grid, it gets confined to that space. Now let's put it in there and watch what happens. Even though that is narrow, I can still get it in there and the grid will accommodate it. And so now we have a simple two column layout grid with objects in each cell. Let's double click on it and see how it's behaving. Here's our two columns. They're equal in distance. We've got th this particular cell uh, with a left alignment and this one with the right alignment. That's why the CSS menu did what it did over here. We're also using what's called a fixed layout as opposed to a fluid, and we'll talk about that in another grid when we get down to it. The gutter width, that's the amount of space on the edges of this particular column. Each of these columns can have their own settings. We also have a breakpoint setting here, which may throw you off because we said, you remember, you don't need breakpoints or page variations when you create a website with a layout grid. However, you can use breakpoints, and I'll show you why we would here in just a minute. The position is floating as opposed to fixed. Another technical issue here, and I won't go very deep into this, but floating is a CSS term for how these objects are going to respond inside the grid. We'll skip over that for now and get to some of the stuff that's more fundamental. There's padding. We can have padding on the top or the bottom of the object, and we can set the maximum width. The other thing we can do is we can check this box to make it a little more flexible, and that gives us the allowance of setting a vertical. So if we uncheck this box, we can't decide on the vertical alignment. And I like to do that. So I checked this box. That allowed me to put this text in the middle vertically. That's a pretty simple one. Let's go on to this next grid. This grid is a little more interesting. This is a single column grid. And what it has inside of it is called a blog object. Now you may have thought that that was a carousel because when you look at this page, this looks like a carousel. It's actually not. In fact, it is an object called a blog object. And in your tools, you'll see under the miscellaneous, you'll see the blog object. There's actually blogs and articles that kind of work together. A blog object is a collection of articles. And those articles can be associated with an image. So what we did was we put a blog object inside the single cell of this layout. Let's double click on the blog object. And you can see we've got three blog articles associated with it. But double clicking on this one, you see it has an image that it's associated with. So what we have is a blog object with three articles that's set to act like a carousel because we've got it enabled here. And then we set the delay and the pagination and all that good stuff. So this is a good example of using the layout grid for a blog object with images associated. And the reason why we did that is because that's what allows us, the combination of all those things, allows us this beautiful 
responsiveness. Look at the image that's inside that blog object. See how it scales just right. It's going to adjust as the browser width does. Let's go to the next one. Here's a really simple, again, a single column. Let's double click on the layout grid. It's just got one cell. That's why it's got the 12x in it. This one is fluid. We've also got some gutter width, so we have some uh, space on the side. Again, it's floating, no padding, and it aligns to the left. Now, the object that's in this particular grid, this object right here, looks like a text object, but it's actually a specific kind of text object. Watch what happens when I put it back in the grid. It lights up and snaps into place. This is called a heading object. It's way up here at the top of your tools right here. It's not the same as a text object. It's a specific kind of text object called a heading. If you double click on it, and I just drew one out here so you can see, we're going to double click on it. You can see that it is what's called an H1 tag. and You can change these. Won't get into all the details of that. It's a specific kind of text object that's used for headings. And that's what we've got in here. The third one, has what are called articles. These are kind of like the blog, except that the um, tools in 90 Second Website Builder lets you create separate articles and blog objects. And I have videos about these, so you can go watch those if you want to get in the details. But this happens to be what's called an article object right here. If we double click on this, you can see the attributes. It's called an article. It's got a subject. It's got a date. It's got content. This would be the article's content that people would read. Um, it's associated with... Um, a certain style of text and colors. You might have a background if you want one, and it's linked to some page where they could read more about the article. There are a lot of styles that you can change here for the articles. In this case, we made a layout grid that's got three columns, and we set it to be fixed, not fluid, but fixed, and I'll show you why here in a second. And we're gonna we'll mess with that so we can see what that does. We've got that we've got it aligning to the left, we've got a 480 breakpoint, etc. This will all make sense here in a second. So here's our three column grid. Here's our three different um, articles. I'm actually gonna preview this so that we can see what this looks like with those articles in a fixed position. You'll notice that these articles are all a particular width. They're the width that they were when we designed them. There's the three articles, and here they are live, so to speak. And as we move or adjust the width of this page, you can see that they stay that width until we get to the 480 breakpoint. And again, remember, there is a breakpoint. You can see that they change. I'll tell you why here in a second. But first, let's look at why they look the way they do. And here's why they do. We set this on fixed. I'm going to change it to fluid. Fluid allows them, instead of being fixed, fluid allows them to stretch and accommodate the width of the browser. Look at the difference. Here's what happens when we put them on fluid. I'm going to go like this. Watch what happens to these objects. Notice that they stretch because they're stretching to fit the width of the browser. They're not staying in fixed width. Hopefully that makes sense. I know there's a lot of information here, but these are kind of complex. Okay, so that's a good trick. Now, you'll notice as I go down here, they really change. Boom. They go into some weird stacking order. Well, that's by design. We want them to do that. And the way we told the software to do that is because we are also using a breakpoint. If we didn't use a breakpoint, this would just continue on until they got tiny and tinier and tinier. And now, but when we get down to 480, which is about tablet size or smaller, we want them to be stacked. And so we told the software to break this at 480, right here. Make a breakpoint at 480. So this might be getting technical, so if you need to, go back and play the video again and listen to this. All right, let's do a couple other things. Here's another single grid with a heading object in it. You know how that works. This is a single grid that has a photo album in it. The photo album object, photo gallery, I should say, photo gallery object, double click on, and you can see, you know, we've got our images and we've got it doing all the things we want it to do. We've set it to be responsive. This is important so that the thumbnails will respond. There's a lot of settings in here. You can set your style for it here. But the important thing is it's part of a grid. Now watch what happens when it's part of a grid. As you can see in our live version here, and as you saw before, it responds. 
and adjusts without any need for multiple variations until of course we get down to that 480 and if we need it to respond to the 480 we can put that in the settings as well down at the bottom of this page we've got another single column where we've got um, a heading text this is a dual column a two column grid this has just an image in it notice the image snaps into place at the top if we put another image in here it's gonna they're gonna snap into place this is a single text object inside this one we've got another grid down here and you'll notice we have a lot of objects here let's go double click on this so we can see how this one was constructed here's the layout grid notice it's only two columns and yet it's got all these things in here I'll show you why here in a second and this one we've got set to fluid we want it to break at 480 if there's anything to break just because we set a 480 breakpoint doesn't mean it necessarily will need it but it's there and these are floating positions now you'll notice like I said there are a number of objects here though even though there's only two cells so this is one cell and it's got a text object in it this is the other cell over here and it's got three objects in it it's got this one this is a button this is a an edit box and this is a label for an email address now those objects if you're familiar with a form you'll notice those sound like form objects in fact this looks like a form doesn't it this is the label here's where someone would type in their email address and then they could subscribe well this is what's cool about a layout grid you can't put forms into a layout grid you can't go up here and grab a form and just put it into the grid instead it's better what you can do is you can actually turn the layout grid itself into a form that's why it has this tab right here and simply enable the form now this grid will behave like a form be able to submit content and work it just like any other kind of form here's where you set the form settings like you would you would go to PHP Builder you'd set your email address if you've worked with forms you, you recognize that window so while you can't put a form into a grid a grid can be a form this is what makes the layout grid tool kind of complex but not so much that it's too advanced to work with but it does do some advanced things and it's something you're gonna to have to mess around with and experiment with to see all of the nuances I'm gonna make further videos about the layout grid because there's some th the, there are some other things you can do with it that make it really powerful so for now let's c just consider this a quick overview of how the layout grid works mostly I want you to see that when you do use a layout grid it snaps into position on the page the next one will snap into position under that you can organize or reorder those and I'm just summarizing here what we just talked about through the object manager if you wanted to move this top layout grid down below you'd have to go in here and drag it down like this and it would go into a different position that's how you do that I also want you to know that as you drag objects into the layout grid you can see that it will accommodate the size of that object and it will highlight so that's the first thing to understand is how to just manage the grid itself and manage the columns in that grid in the next video we'll get into some more deeper things a little more advanced tools on how you can use this to really build some great websites that are responsive in 90 second website builder